Welcome back to Growth Groups, and we are so excited to be continuing our study relationship keys. Uh, I know it's been a huge blessing to me as we've looked over the past couple of weeks at being forgiving in our relationships. <laughs> and uh, well, what are you laughing at? I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will forgive you for interrupting me. Uh, but being forgiven in our relationships, being real in our relationships, and uh, not having a facade, but that uh, we're open and honest and vulnerable uh, with people in our life. And uh, last week, looking at... Sorry, I don't know why I'm laughing right now. Brian, right before we pressed record, just made me laugh. And it's making me laugh right now. <laughs> and then last week, we looked at having integrity in our relationships, <clears throat> that we would have a wholeness of character. Um, and uh, the kids had a fun illustration uh, for their video uh, where there was a styrofoam cup and we poked holes in it. And uh, we looked at that in relation to um, our relationships and if we have a character that is consistent across our life uh, versus if we have uh, you know maybe some glaring holes and yeah. and uh, we even talked with the recycled teens about uh, the importance uh, that there is in in all of us will have holes in our life areas where we're we're not quite up to where we should be uh, but always be pursuing uh, being able to uh, have the Spirit work on those areas uh, that we don't ever just throw our hands up and go, ah, that's just who I am. Yeah. Uh, but, but pursuing the Lord uh, in those ways. And tonight we are going to be talking about being an enjoyable person to be around. And uh, that's why I made you laugh at the beginning. That is, I, yeah, I, I was wanted... literally thinking... This is a good thought because you go. you, you're an enjoyable person to be around. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. Um, yeah, are you being real when you say that? Uh, but uh, I am so excited for tonight, and we're going to start off, and we're going to be in Acts and what chapter, Pastor? So Acts 18, but we're actually not going to be there. We're going to cool. talk. We're going to talk about a story that takes place in Acts 18. There's actually four places in Scripture that the people in Acts 18 that we find are written about. Uh, it's Acts 18, Romans 16, 1 Corinthians 16, and 2 Timothy 4. Mm -hmm. So um, I hope you've been enjoying the whole series tonight, talking about being enjoyable. Acts 18, we learn about uh, two people num uh, named in Scripture. Uh, their names are Aquila and Priscilla, and um, a husband and a wife uh, duo that was with Paul. And if you recall, uh, Paul was traveling and at Acts 17, um, Paul is in um, uh, Athens, and, right? It's Athens? Yeah, he's in Athens making his way into uh, Acts 18th Corinth. Is that right? Or Ephesus? That's correct. Corinth. Yeah. All right. My brain's not working very well right now. I apologize. He really threw me off at the beginning of this, and so I just lost track of everything. But we're already too far in to hit stop and re-record, so we're just going to stick with it. Uh, Acts 18, Paul is in Corinth. Um, <clears throat> Acts 17, there's a lot that takes place, and one thing that I want to highlight, uh, well, I'll tie it in. Paul was at this place uh, socially and physically and spiritually that he was just completely drained. As a matter of fact, the, the book of um, 1 Thessalonians is written from Corinth, and you can read about Paul's spirit there because he writes to the believers in Thessalonica while he's in Corinth, and he is just at this place of discouragement. He's at a place of frustration. Um, he's at a place where some people that had been with him had left, um, not for bad reasons, but some had left just because of not being able to travel anymore. Others had left because of uh, poor reasons. And so Paul was just at this very discouraged place. But as he's there, uh, he decides, I'm going to take a, not a break from ministry, but I'm going to, I've got to support myself. So I'm going to find a, a job and of course, tent making, uh, working with material is what he knew. And so he teams up with uh, a couple, Aquila and Priscilla. And um, God would use this couple to be an absolute incredible blessing in the life of Paul. And it was at a huge time in his life, a time when he needed it, a yeah. time when he was uh, in despair and in discouragement. God brought these people to him. And we don't have really a lot of time today to look at everything about Aquila and Priscilla, but suffice to say that they were enjoyable for Paul to be around. As a matter of fact, I want to read you a verse, uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 3 and 4. Here's what Paul says in 
kind of a, a greeting to Priscilla and Aquila and how he describes them. He says, Greet Pris Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the, of the Gentiles. So Paul is saying, not only did I find refreshment by them and, were, and was blessed by them, but all of the churches that they've touched, that they've been around, has been impacted by them. You actually find Aquila and Priscilla, they, um, they disciple a man later in Acts 18 whose name is Apollos, uh, who we read about in the book of 1 Corinthians that is one of the best orators or preachers for that time. He was discipled by Aquila and Priscilla. So this couple... They're just all over Paul's journeys, and just about every time you read about them, you read about the encouragement and the blessing they were and the fact that they were enjoyable uh, to be around. So that's the couple we're going to look at, or we're really going to kind of try to maybe learn from or emulate uh, in this lesson. But Brian, as we talk about being enjoyable in a friendship, yeah. uh, define what we mean about being enjoyable in a friendship. Yeah. So the specific kind of enjoyment that we're talking about uh, tonight is not just you are a funny person or you can light up a room. Right. Uh, those can be personality things um, that, uh, you know, maybe you can be an enjoyable person to be around without being a type A, yeah. uh, cracking jokes, comedian, class con. You, you can be enjoyable even if you aren't uh, like our wonderful pastor. Uh, I've, I've heard you mention, uh, w wasn't it on one of your report cards, Dennis talks too yes, much? Yes, all the time. I'm so sorry. Uh, but so we're, we're talking about being enjoyable that we would be living out the fruit of the Spirit in our words and actions and attitudes. And when we think about being an enjoyable person uh, in relation to this, we want to be someone that when others are around us, they walk away feeling encouraged. Uh, they walk away feeling loved or at peace with how God has the world. They aren't walking away from time with us feeling discouraged or disappointed or angry. Uh, to be around an enjoyable person is a little bit like to have an interaction with God himself because it's the spirit living through us. And so that's what we want to pursue. We want to pursue being a friend to others that when they're around us, they are feeling the encouragement and the fruit of the Spirit flowing out of our life. Yeah, when I think about being enjoyable in a friendship, I really think about bringing joy to the friendship uh, in whatever way we can. And, you know, there's a ton of places in Scripture. We talked about a Priscilla and Aquila just a minute ago, but there's other places. I think about um, one verse that we mentioned, 2 Timothy 1, 16 and 17. Paul wrote this, The Lord give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me and was not afraid of, not ashamed of my chain. Uh, but when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. And Paul would write about the encouragement that he was uh, even in the book of Philemon. Mm -hmm. And so you can look in Scripture tons of places where it talks about people who are refreshing or enjoyable uh, to be around. And so here's what I want to do. I want to uh, just ask the question, how do you and I become enjoyable in a friendship? Mm -hmm. So let's just take about five to six minutes and let's talk through a few ways that we can be enjoyable in a friendship. Uh, the first one that I think about, and really we could apply this into every one of our lessons, um, is just simply the thought to be humble. You know, sometimes the reason we are not uh, enjoyable to be around is because of our pride. Think about this verse, Proverbs 22, 4, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Mm -hmm. Humility is something we learned about this actually last Sunday. Um, that was one of the passages in our passage in Luke chapter 6. Uh, but you know, when you think about humility, I think we need, of course, humility in every aspect of life, but a lot of our friendships, we bring pride to the table, yeah. and we talk about us, we give information about us, we want people to talk about us. Um, humility approaches a friendship and says, uh, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm going to defer, I'm going to put others first, 
I'm going to make sure that in every aspect of this relationship, it's not all about me. So if I'm going to be enjoyable, number one, I've got to learn to be humble. Uh, what's the second lesson that we can learn? Yeah, evaluate our conversations. And uh, as we were looking at this, it made me think of Psalm 19, 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I also think of how Jesus talked about uh, our words and the kind of warning that he gave that we will give an account of every idle word that we speak. Yeah. As it relates to being enjoyable, think through and evaluate the, the topics and the things and the attitudes that you have in conversations with other people. Uh, are you always bringing up uh, maybe things that are uh, sorrowful, maybe kind of a, a poor me uh, type thing? Uh, are you always trying to rile people up to anger about yeah. whatever topic? Um, we, we can see this in a lot of different ways in our life, uh, but we want to be people that the conversations that we have build other people up and don't tear them down. Yeah, and when we evaluate our communication with people and our conversation with people, don't just evaluate what we say. Um, but how we say it are mm -hmm. not only our words, but our tone and the topics we talk about. I think of Proverbs 18, 4, the words of a man's mouth are as deep waters mm -hmm. and a wellspring of wisdom uh, as a uh, flowing brook. And just the idea that when we speak, it's not, uh, it's not aggressive, it's not mean, it's it, it taking tone into account, yeah. just kindness in our words. So if we're going to think about this idea of being enjoyable as a friend, we've got to, number one, be humble. Number two, evaluate our conversation. And then number three, a thought we wanted to put in here is the idea of controlling our spirit. Controlling our spirit. Listen to a few verses. Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dryeth the bones. 1 Corinthians 6, 20. You're bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Proverbs 22, 24, and 25 says this, Make no friendship with an angry man, and a furious man thou shalt not go, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. The idea of being enjoyable by controlling our spirit really just has to do with understanding that, um, I hate to say it this way, but if you're like me, sometimes some of the people that you're most comfortable being frustrated with are those you're closest to. Mm -hmm had a rough day, you take it out on those that are closest to you. Because why? Because they have to live with you. Your kids are stuck with you. Your spouse stuck with you. You know, and that's kind of, maybe, maybe we don't really think about it, but it's there subconsciously. Yeah. And I think if we're going to be enjoyable, we've got to keep our own spirit in check. What do you think? What are your thoughts about that, controlling your spirit? Yeah, I think uh, even as we talked about the beginning of being enjoyable is the fruit of the spirit being lived out. Uh, that this would be, we would have temperance or self-control yeah. in, in how we interact with people in our attitude. Um, that we can sometimes excuse uh, our attitude away because we say, okay, if I'm not saying something unkind to other people, if I'm not you know, physically slamming a door or, or punching a kitten, uh, if <laughs> we've got to bring that one back, uh, if I'm not doing any of those things, then I'm doing fine. And it doesn't matter, you know, what my attitude is as long as my words and my actions are fine. Yeah. Um, but even the way in which, uh, we kind of hold our spirit is important. Yeah. And, uh, and having temperance and control on that, um, especially like you mentioned with those closest to us. Uh, is such a wonderful gift to be able to give to those that are in close relationship with us that yeah. they don't get the worst of us, um, but that they as well um, can have an enjoyable uh, dad or an enjoyable spouse. Right. Because when we are not, when we are not controlling our spirit, um, man, we we aren't enjoyable to be around. No. I, I actually I'm going to tell on myself. So. Uh, this last weekend, Hannah had an art show in Richland, and so I drove down on Thursday of last week, and I uh, helped her set up and did all of that, and we got done setting up her art booth and everything at about 8.30 or so, and I still had to drive back, but we were going to grab dinner together, and of course, she stays down there during, her, during the shows, and um, I, I didn't really realize it, 
But we got on the road and I'm driving around the truck and the trailer looking for somewhere to eat. I had to get gas. And I, I said in a frustrated tone and spirit, and I totally didn't mean it this way, but I said this, I, we were driving. I said, all right, I'm going to turn right and I'm going to find gas and I want you to find a restaurant, somewhere to eat. And I, I was just kind of short. And Hannah stopped and she kind of looked at me and she was like, hey, you don't need to be mean. And I, I, I paused and in all honesty, like, I replayed it in my head and I went, oh, it totally came out that way. And I, I didn't mean it that way. And I bring that up to say, controlling our spirit, sometimes we don't realize the, the spirit by which we're coming across. Yeah. And somebody might say, man, you're being kind of rude, or your facial expressions, or your tone, or whatever came out this way, yeah. goes back to being humble, receive that, and okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to address, address that. Why? Because I want to be enjoyable yeah. to be around. I don't want you to, every time you're around <laughs> me, think, oh, he's going to be frustrated again, or irritated again. Last lesson is this. If we're going to be enjoyable, uh, this is the good one. Yeah. Just learn to have fun. You know what? I think some of us get so caught up in defending some sort of persona or image that we just miss out on having fun with people. Um, Brian, why don't you give us some verses on that? Yeah, I think of Proverbs 15, 15. Uh, my, my dad, especially when I was having a bad attitude uh, or was just you know kind of being a downer, would always quote this one, all the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart hath a continual feast. Uh, so if we have the mindset that oh, everything's terrible, everything's sad, everything's whatever, well then, like it says, uh, all the days of the afflicted are evil. It says, but he that is of a merry heart, if you have a heart that says, I'm going to have joy in the Lord, uh, it says he has a continual feast, that there is joy. Uh, Jesus talked to the Pharisees about this yeah. because they, uh, as we've heard a lot about, just nothing was ever good enough for them. They had kind of that false piety of they were super holy and everyone else just wasn't. And he tells them this in Matthew 11, but where unto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, we've piped unto you and you have not danced. We have mourned unto you and you have not lamented. And then he says, for John came neither eating or drinking. And they say, he has a devil. You know, he, he's crazy. He's weird. He, he's possessed. Uh, the son of man came eating and drinking. And they say, behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a drunkard, a, a friend of publicans and sinners. Um, and Jesus says to them, he says, okay, nothing can ever make you happy. Nothing can ever bring you joy. If someone comes and they don't eat and drink, you say he's possessed and crazy. And Jesus comes and he eats and drinks like a regular person, uh, not like crazy John. And they go, okay, he's a glutton and a drunkard. And he says, nothing is ever good enough for you. And so uh, even what we see from Jesus there is have, have joy in the life that God has given you. God has given you everything you need for joy in your life. And that ought to bring us comfort that we don't have to be sad the way the world is sad. We don't have to be angry the way the world is angry. Um, we have the promise that the Spirit wants to bring joy in our life. Yeah. And uh, I think that brings just a lot of comfort to us that Jesus wants you to have joy and to spread it to others around you. And you don't have to be like the Pharisees and be upset and angry about everything. Yeah, my mom, all growing up, she would say something like, don't be a fuddy dud. <laughs> and uh, you know what? That's, uh, I think, even in the book of Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a time. There's a time and a season to have fun yeah. and to experience life together. And so being enjoyable in our relationships, that is our E that we're talking about today. And you've got some questions there and some discussion thoughts. And so I want to encourage you to do that. My challenge, the only thing I have for you uh, regarding this, is just looking at these four areas. Am I humble? Uh, am I, how am I in my conversation? Uh, when I think about my spirit, am I one that comes across contentious and frustrated often, even with those closest to me? And then am I a person having fun? So just ask the Lord, God, would you help me? Would you help me be enjoyable in my relationships? Well, enjoy your time together discussing this and look forward to seeing you next week.